So I'm Katie Bryant, and I'm one of um, Melanie's Diamond Coaches, and she is away right now, so I am hosting this call for her. And she told me uh, what I need to talk to you guys about. And um, so I'm going to kind of go over everything, and then um, at the end, if you guys have any questions, um, you guys can use that chat bar, or you can unmute yourself and ask some questions that way. Um, I'm so sorry, guys, because we still have some people that haven't muted, and it's a little hard. Hopefully, you guys can hear me okay. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to be talking about inviting and um, handling objections tonight. Um, but we're going to talk about a couple things before I get started with that. So one of the things we want to talk about is... Can everybody hear me okay? Because I can hear like a lot of noise on my end. You guys can hear me okay? Okay. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about is having a goal of helping three to five people this month. Um, we're still in the beginning of the month and your preseason for your challenge group, if you're joining Melanie, doesn't start until the 15th. So if you um, haven't been in the challenge group before, that first week is when we spend time getting everybody ready um, before we actually start the challenge group and just kind of easing them into the program to the, you know, the 30 days that we're together. So your goal is to get um, at least three to five people that you can help that will join that group. You want to get them to sign up before the 15th, um, but if they, you know, sign up at the last minute, um, that's okay too because we do have Beachbody on demand and they will be able to access um, their workouts and their eating plan and everything that they need to access um, before it gets shipped to their house. They'll be able to to get all the information and, and they won't feel like they're behind if their package doesn't arrive in time. So just to let you know about that and that um, the Beachbody On Demand, that club membership is free for the first 30 days. So they can um, access that and start that right away so that way they're um, not falling behind when your group does start on the 15th. Um, and basically we're going to talk a lot about posting because a lot of you are just starting off um, coaching and um, sharing on social media, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, um, whatever. I don't, maybe you have a like page. I don't know if any of you have started a like page yet, but um, basically we're going to kind of go over what you should and should not be sharing and talk about inviting. So some of the biggest mistakes that coaches make when they first start is they kind of just start posting right away and they start posting um, pictures of Shakeology, pictures of maybe like their workout and it's not a picture of them. It's just like a picture of this um, or maybe it's just a picture of the 21 day fix book. And um, I don't know about you guys, but when I first reached out to Melanie, I had no idea what a beach body coach was. And um, if I would have saw a beach body workout um, on Facebook, I would have no idea what you know, if someone posted this, I have no idea what that is. So um, one of the things that you want to stay away from is posting stock pictures, um, anything that seems like marketing or that you're, like, you're trying to sell. Them. Your main objection um, is really to um, share, not to sell. Um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I don't want, um, I've had people contact me that maybe sell some other things and um, I see that they're constantly posting stock pictures and I kind of get that feeling when I see that they've messaged me like, oh, they're probably going to ask me if I want to buy something. Um, and, you know, you don't want people thinking that about you. That's not why um, most of us, I would like to say 99% of us are in this business. We're in this business because we fall in love with the product. We love what it's doing for our life. And um, hopefully we've had um, 
transformations or we're in the middle of having a transformation or maybe we're just in the beginning of our journey, but those are the really important things that you wanna share. You don't wanna be sharing the stock pictures or advertisements, you wanna be sharing your story. Um, and that's part of like the three vital behaviors. One of the things that they talk about is um, being a product of the product. So when you're doing that, you're actually building your business and um, you'll start to build relationships and you'll start to build trust. And that's really important. Um, I want to tell you guys that for me, um, now that I've been in this business for a little while, I've had a lot of people that have come to me and that have told me that they were following me for months. I actually had a person that followed me for an entire year, never liked the post, never commented on any of my pictures. Um, I think I messaged them once, they never responded back. Um, but they were following me and, and listening to what I had to say and, and um, not missing my post and I had no clue. So um, people will be, even though they don't like or comment and you kind of feel like, oh my gosh, did anybody see that post? Nobody's liking it, nobody's commenting. Should I have not posted that? But people are paying attention. And just because they're not commenting or liking on it doesn't mean that they're not seeing it. I mean, I'm sure you guys scroll through things on social media and um, you know, may, you may see something and be like, oh, that's really funny, or I really like that, or um, that's a great picture of their child or, or whatnot, and you never comment or you like it and you just keep scrolling. So people are doing what we're doing too. So just try to try to keep that in mind because I know when you're first starting off, um, you know, it, you want people to notice your posts, you want people to like them, you want them to support you, and sometimes you can feel like maybe nobody's paying attention to me or nobody's listening to me, and how am I going to share something I'm so excited and so passionate about if nobody's paying attention? And I just want to let you guys know that people are paying attention, and it's so important that you be consistent. Um, because they're watching you, whether, whether you believe that or not. I mean, they really are watching you. So um, one of the things I want to tell you is um, a lot of new coaches make a mistake of um, following other coaches. And they're like, oh my gosh, that coach is getting a lot of likes and a lot of interaction. So I'm just going to post what that coach is posting. And so you you know, copy the pose, you copy the wording, maybe you even copy and paste it and you, you put it on your page. Um, and the problem with that is people aren't getting to know you and about your journey and who you are and what you're all about. They're getting to know somebody else. And so you don't want that to happen. It's fine to follow other coaches and to get, um, you know, get different ideas and kind of see what other people are doing to see what's working for them. But you want to do um, what you feel comfortable putting out there. And you want to be posting things that reflect who you are because you want people to be attracted to you. And um, so that's really important to, to keep in mind when you're um, posting and coming up with different ideas. Um, another thing that I have found that's really important is um, be honest. It's okay to share um, that you've messed up. It's okay to share that you've fallen off the wagon um, because we're human and we all mess up. We all have um, failures. But what I think is important to do is take whatever negative may have happened or whatever you're feeling bad about and sh share how you took that situation and you made it better. Um, I know for me, like, I love food and I could eat an ice cream sundae every single night um, in the past. And so for me, if I could eat one ice cream sundae for seven nights in a row, well, that was something to be really proud of. So I would, you know, I would share, I would talk about that. Um, and then sometimes I had those nights where, you know, I went to a family party and maybe I snapped too much and the entire next day I felt absolutely horrible about it. Like I actually felt sick to my stomach. Um, and then I talk about that, like, you know, I had a great time and I enjoyed a lot of food and a couple cocktails, but you know, when your body's used to eating clean and you're living a healthier lifestyle, it's not always worth, um, overindulging. 
So it's good to share those things, um, things too, and, and to be honest and to take anything negative in your life or, or those slip, slip ups and just turn them into something positive. Um, you want to share what workout you're doing, but when I say share, I, again, I don't mean um, posting a picture of this and no picture of you and saying this is what I'm doing. Um, post a picture, a sweaty selfie, and, and in your post, you could say, just got done uh, doing hammer and chisel. Um, talk about um, maybe how you are on your fifth week of hammer and chisel and you were finally able to do 10 push-ups in a row. Um, those are little ways to talk about your workouts without actually um, advertising for them. And so you're sharing what you're doing. Um, um, so I think one of the things that's important when you are posting, and I, I know I'm using the word sharing a lot tonight, um, but you, you want to be focusing on that versus um, selling and convincing people. If I think of it this way, um, when I go to a new hairdresser and I have finally found a hairdresser that actually does what I ask her to do, and I'm like super excited, I left the hairdresser and she didn't cut 10 inches off my hair and uh, make it look like a hot mess. Like I'm, I'm excited. I'm feeling good. And I want to share that with all my girlfriends. Like, Oh my gosh, I just went and got my hair done. Great hairdresser. You know, I want to recommend her to everybody that may need a new hairdresser. And I'm sharing my experience with other people. It's something that we naturally do. It's no difference when different when you go out to eat at a restaurant and you have a great dinner and you want to share it with people that you know. It's the same thing with Beachbody. You know, when we're having these great experiences um, with our workouts and um, learning how to eat healthier and drinking our shake allergy and what it's like to be a part of um, a challenge group, um, you want to share all those bits and pieces with people. You want to let them know what makes us different. What's so different about what we do versus working out at a gym or, um, you know, just eating healthy. There's a lot of little pieces that fit this puzzle that make this process really work. And part of it, a huge part of it, as you, most of you know, is our challenge groups and having a coach and having that accountability and, and being able to share with a group of people that are going through the same struggles that you're going through. And, um, I don't think to me, like, I found it so empowering to be with a bunch of women I didn't know, yet we were all kind to each other. We all lifted each other up. We all encouraged each other. If somebody had a bad day, we were all there to be like, it's okay, you know, fresh start tomorrow. You can do this. And that's just like a really awesome thing to be a part of. And um, as coaches, you guys will learn that it gets even better because when you're on this end and you're helping people, get healthier, get off medication, lose weight, um, feel great in their skin again, set healthy examples for their family. When you get to have a hand in that and helping other people, that makes you feel like a million bucks. It really does. And, um, and you know, you'll get into more about sharing about coaching um, soon into your businesses too, but I know we're focusing um, on challenge groups and getting new customers to join our groups. Um, one of the things that we're all doing is we're all drinking Shakeology. So um, that's another a mistake that a lot of coaches make is they post about buying Shakeology and advertising stock pictures. I see them in my newsfeed every single day. And you know, you can do something so simple, like you could just be like, um, have your shake allergy in your hand and you're in your car and you're like, oh my gosh, you could post about how it's so great to have a healthy lunch that takes less than two minutes to make and you're on your way to wherever you have to go. And then you just, you're sharing, you just snuck in um, shake allergy into your post and you're not selling. And, and that's what you want to do. You want to share why 
what does Shakeology do for you in your life? Why, what benefits are you getting from it? And um, it's really important too that you really educate yourself on Shakeology because people are gonna ask you a lot of questions and you wanna be able to answer them. Now, um, as time goes on, you'll educate yourself more and you'll watch more videos and you'll learn more about it and you'll definitely get more comfortable talking about it. But it's really important to learn as much as you can um, about what Shakeology um, does for you, what's in Shakeology, how Shakeology is made. And um, there's a lot of great videos. I'm sure you've um, watched that video from Shay Stanford, which is a great um, video on Shakeology, which is in the training group. And it's really important that you educate yourself. And then when you're running your own challenge groups on your own, you're posting those videos and you're sharing those details with people. It's also important that when you're sharing like that picture where you've got your Shakeology in your hand and you're like, I love this stuff and it tastes so good. And you know, you would never know it has all these vitamins and nutrients in it and you never know that, you know, it has like 10 salads in it and um, probiotics and all these great things. So um, you want to make sure that you are sharing about Shakeology because it's something that you're doing daily. And um, it's important that you're educating yourself oh. as much as you can um, on the subject because people will say to you, well, I drink this shake. How does this compare to Shakeology? And if you haven't gotten that question yet, you will get it, and you'll probably get it a lot. I just got it. Um, um, and in all honesty, some people will get into it, and they'll say, my shake is better than yours. Um, I don't get into it. I was never a shake drinker before Shakeology. Um, I actually didn't even want to drink Shakeology. I thought it was like slim fast. And um, Melanie was like, no, 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 no. It's nothing like that. You know, um, just give it a try for 30 days. And if you don't like it, you know, you don't have to drink it anymore and you can get your money back. And, and um, she's like, you're going to like it. And um, so I was like, okay. And like, I brought the bag to my doctor. I was like, are you sure I put this? It's okay to put this in my body. Like there's a bunch of ingredients in here. I don't, I don't even know what they are or what they do. And like, then I started researching the heck out of it. And, um, and I was like, wow, this stuff is like legit. It's, it's good stuff. And my doctor approved it. Like, okay, I guess I'll make a shake and drink it. And then, um, I will tell you that the first shake I made was really bad. <laughs> Um, but then once I added a frozen banana to it and peanut butter and put it in the blender, it was so much better than water and ice. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I share that too in posts and I share recipes like my favorite Shakeology recipe and, you know, I'll share a picture of me and my Shakeology with that. Um, but I just want to let you guys know that it is important. I mean, I, nobody expects you guys to learn everything about Shakeology, but it is important to take the time and educate yourself about what it does for you and what's in it and why it's important to drink it every day. Um, so um, I'm sure you're getting objections, um, and that's pretty uh, um, normal. And um, it's something that everybody deals with in their business, whether you know, you're just starting or you've been in the business for a couple of years. Um, a lot of people talk about the cost of Shakeology. And sometimes um, I think that the best advice to give you guys is when somebody asks how much it is, instead of just blurting out the price to them or sending them to the price, um, break it down. And tell them that, you know, it seems like a lot of money up front that you're paying for Shakeology. But when you break it down to what you're spending every day, it's only costing you $4 a meal. Um, I know when I used to drink Starbucks, I spent a lot more on my frozen uh, frappuccino from there. And there was nothing good in that. And I could have drank those every single day. <laughs> And, you know, when you're making five, six dollars here or there every day, you don't really realize how much you're spending on a monthly basis. So when you kind of take that and you relate it um, to people, they, they can make that connection. Or maybe their thing is fast food every day. Okay, well, how much are you spending on fast food every day? 
uh, you know, five to seven dollars. Okay. Well, what if you were only spending four dollars um, versus that, and you were actually getting something that was so much more healthier for you, um, and it's going to take you less time because you don't have to go through a drive-through. Um, you can just get a little personal blender and make it in your office. Um, so I try to talk about things like that as well. Um, I, I think the most important thing is when you're getting objections, like when I'm on the phone with someone, um, I like write down whatever their objections are. And then I'm like thinking as they're talking to me, like, so if prices is, is one of them, like it's just too expensive. Okay. Well, what, what is too expensive about it? Or how can you make this work? Or how can I help you make this work? So instead of just saying to them, oh, okay, I understand it's too expensive, I get it. Um, you haven't really helped them figure out a way how to make this happen because if they're talking to you and they, they um, contacted you, that means that they're interested. So our job is to figure out how we can make this work. Here, little baby. Okay, sorry. Um, let's see. Okay, a huge thing, and I know you guys um, are supposed to be reading the compound effect for personal development. Are you guys all reading that? It's a great book. Um, so, a huge thing that helps a lot of us when you're getting objections is personal development. And I can honestly tell you guys when I'm having one of those weeks where I'm just like, oh, man, I feel like I'm working so hard and nothing's really going my way and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And then I like kind of think about it and I'm like, yep, I haven't done my personal development. I need, I need to get back to doing that on a daily basis. It really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you get a lot of objections um, and you're hearing a lot of no's, um, it's sometimes it's hard not to take it personal and even though it's not no to you it's it's no to um, this product and I have to tell you that every time somebody says no to me I automatically change it in my head not right now um, they're not saying no they're just saying not right now and um, I think that's really important to remember and with the personal development um, it just it helps you build confidence um, it's that one piece of something positive that you're putting into your life on a daily basis. And I don't know anybody that has not benefited from having personal development in their life. So it is, I mean, I never read personal development before this. In fact, um, I had it, I loved reading when I was younger and then I had it read in a really long time, except for my children's books with my kids. And then um, I just, I, I think I read Fifty Shades of Grey really quick. <laughs> and then um, after that, um, when they started talking about personal development, I was like, oh, I can't fit any reading in. When do I have time to read? And then I'm thinking, well, I, made, I did make time for those three really naughty books. I'm sure I could make 10 minutes. 10 minutes a day for personal development. And um, once I started incorporating that every single day, I really did notice that it was making a huge difference in my life. Um, so I really encourage you guys, if you haven't started the compound fad, that you do start it. Um, and as soon as you finish it, get a new book and just if, if you can't even, if you can't get a new book, there's um, a lot of great podcasts that you can listen to that are, um, that are free. And um, those are also great things for personal development that you can listen to on your phone, in your car. Um, it's, it's an app that you can, um, if you don't know what it is, it's an app on your phone. And um, there's, you can access actually the National Wake Up Call from Beachbody on it, but there's, um, there's like a great, like the podcasts I listen to are the Shaleen show, which is like motivation, leadership, and confidence and family. Um, the Entree Leadership podcast I listen to, um, the School of Greatness with Lewis Howes, I listen to that as well. And those are all free. And those are things that you can listen to while you're grocery shopping. Um, sometimes I'll listen to it while I'm 
washing the dishes, um, but just make sure that you are always incorporating that into, you know, into your daily power hour um, whenever you can, because it really will help you when you're dealing with objections. Um, let's see. Oh, I, one thing that um, I, I didn't do in the beginning, um, but I wanted to tell you guys about is um, pay attention to your post and pay attention to what posts are getting um, the most likes and the most comments. Um, this is really important. Like I'll just keep like a little notebook and I'll jot things down um, because sometimes I'll post about something and I'll think, oh, this is a great post. And then like nobody really likes it and nobody really comments on it. And then I think, uh, you know, maybe I didn't have any value um, in, in this post. There was no value to, to anybody, so nobody really cared about it. But then I'll post something else, and it'll get all these likes and all these comments, and I'm like, oh, okay, great. Well, people really like to, um, when I share pictures of food recipes. So then I would jot that down, like things that um, people like to see. Because once you kind of know so like your Facebook friends, it's, it's like your audience. Once you know what they want to see every day um, and what they like seeing every day, and you're jotting that down, um, those are the things that you want to keep talking about. Now, you don't want to be a dead horse and keep posting about the same things on a daily basis, but you do want to know what people want to see and hear from you. So for example, um, and, and this does not work for everybody, um, but for me, I post um, a quote every single morning. And I, have, I, don't, I haven't missed in over a year posting a quote every single morning. That works for me. I have coaches that tried copying me and doing the same thing, and they don't get any likes. It does not work for them. Their audience does not want to see a quote first thing in the morning. So even though it works for me and that's what my audience wants to see, doesn't mean that it's going to be, it's going to work for everybody else. So it, it is important to kind of keep track um, of the posts that you're putting out there and what people like and, and um, what they don't like. I do want to tell you though, even though in the beginning you may not be getting a whole lot of likes and comments, don't be too hard on yourself about that because, um, a lot of times people just aren't so sure how to take you because for me, for instance, I was never on Facebook except for just to see pictures of my family. And so I went from never being on Facebook, never posting to posting three times a day. And everybody's like, whoa, where'd she come from? So um, if you're kind of in the same situation, um, that kind of could be happening for you too. Um... Yeah. Lots of things that, um, okay, um, a great way to get people interacting is asking for advice. And I can tell you, I actually love asking for advice on Facebook. Um, I love asking it for makeup. Um, I was just asking advice a couple weeks ago um, about the cruise because I've never been on a cruise before and I am completely clueless. And the Q&A on the, um, on the, cruise ships uh, website really wasn't answering all my questions. So like I made a little post asking for advice from anybody that's been on a cruise and everybody wanted to share their advice. And it was awesome because I was actually taking notes on all the comments because it was great advice. And I love hearing firsthand from people that I know on Facebook because I feel like a lot of the, you know, their friends, their family, or friends of friends and their people's opinions that I can trust. So, um, you know, I saw somebody post about wanting to get a new vacuum and asking for people's advice. And she had like a hundred comments on vacuums. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy the things, you know, people want to talk about, but, about, but people love people sharing, love sharing their advice and commenting. And commenting. So, um, so if you feel like you need to get some interaction on your um, page, that's a great way um, to get people interacting. Um, sharing tips sharing things. Um, I shared, um, one of the tips that I shared was about how I put, um, when I go to make stuffed peppers, I put the peppers in a large muffin tin so the peppers don't tip over. I found that on Pinterest. I am 
um, not really great at cooking. And so Pinterest helps me a lot. So I shared that tip and um, that was a really popular tip. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Why didn't I ever think about that? And so I, I kind of go throughout like what tips um, are helping me. And then I share those with other people. Um, Another thing to ask yourself when you're making your posts and sharing throughout the day, um, especially when you're adding more people to um, your friends list, do people know what you're posting about? Do people know why you're showing up every day? Um, I think for me, when I was posting, I was posting all these workout selfies and I was posting about Shakeology and eating clean and all these things. But when I went back to all my posts, I was never mentioning about anything that I did. So it was like, oh, that's great. She works out every day, but what the heck does she do? Does she just work out? <laughs> you know, I was never sharing with people beyond, beyond that. So I really realized like, wait a second, I need to go back and I need to start adding little sprinkles of what I do in my post. Um, and so that's important too, like to go back and kind of critique yourself and, and ask yourself um, these questions like, oh, am I talking about this? If I were to look at my page, would people have any idea um, at what I'm doing or would they be just completely confused at what I'm putting out there? Um, a huge um, important factor, and I wanna let you guys know, people come into this business um, at all different stages. Some people come into this business and they've got abs of steel and they've got muscles and they're looking great and they look like a beach body coach. For me, when I came into this business um, and Melanie had asked me like three times if I wanted to be a coach and I was like, uh-uh, no way. Um, and then when she asked me, I think it was the third or fourth time, I was like, but how can I be a coach? Like, I still have all this weight to lose. I am I was only five months into my journey. Like who, like I, I can't call myself a beach body coach. Like who would ever come to me for advice? And she's like, no, but you're on this journey and you're gonna show everybody how you're doing this. And um, you know, and that's exactly what I did. I invited people to join me. I said, look, I'm on this journey. Um, these are all the things I love about about it. These are all the things I'm getting from it. Does anybody want to join me in my next challenge group that I'm doing and we can support each other and cheer each other on and, and get healthy together and lose weight together. And, and, um, and she was right. So, you know, if you guys are in the spot where I was when I first started and you're feeling like, Oh my gosh, you know, like I have so much weight to lose and, uh, um, you know, and you're kind of nervous about putting yourself out there and what people really think, people will respect you for putting yourself out there. So um, don't feel like you can't be a good coach because you don't have this um, fit ideal figure. People are going to respect you for wanting to get healthier and for putting yourself out there and wanting to help others while you're on this journey. And in all honesty, the biggest transformations you can share are your own and it's not just about that weight loss or the inches loss um, it's those non-scale victories too it's those little things that may seem little to other people but are really big deals like you know um, moving down an extra notch on your belt or being able to wear your shirt tucked in um, I mean they may seem like little things but I think we all know that those are actually like really big things for us. Those are the things that we celebrate in our groups. And those are the things that, that make us feel really excited and great and make us want to keep continuing on this journey. So it's important to share, um, you know, those transformations of the before and after pictures and, you know, your progress with the, the weight loss and all that. But it's also really important to focus on those non-scale victories. So not only sharing your transformation, but also getting permission from challengers and sharing their transformations as well. I don't know. First of all, um, but I, then I would come do a job. Someone's not muted. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, we're talking about inviting. 
So the best advice I can give you guys about inviting is don't message somebody without having any communication with them and say, hey, I'm a Beachbody coach. Do you want to join my challenge group? You want to work on building a relationship. Um, maybe you just friended this person and you're going to go on their page and you're going to look at their posts and you're going to st start liking their pictures and commenting on their pictures. Like get, get, to know, get to know them and let them get to know you. When you do finally message them, don't message them about Beachbody. Message them and say, hey, I'm so glad that we connected on Facebook and that we're friends. Um, I see that you have three beautiful children, um, you know, and make a connection with them. Maybe you have three kids and maybe there's something that you can um, relate to them about. Maybe they're um, a working full-time mom or stay-at-home mom and there's something that you can connect with them about. Um, there's a couple of people that live in different places in the country and um, here in New York, during this time of year, I always want to move somewhere sunnier and warm. So I may reach out to somebody that lives in Florida and say to them, hey, I see you live in Florida. I would love to move there and get out of this cold, dark place. Um, how do you like living there? You know, and just making that, that little connection. Um, another huge tip that I'm going to share with you guys is I think – Every single person that likes and comments on my post. And not every post that I put out there. Any post that I share about my personal transformation um, where anybody is supporting me, I always send them a message. And I always say to them, I just, I want to take the time to, I know it may seem really simple to you, but I just want to take the time to thank you for liking my post and supporting me along my journey. Um, I know it's something so small and simple, but I can tell you that it's having somebody like in comment on my post truly means a lot to me and their support does mean a lot to me. And they need to know that encouraging other people is a really great thing and it's actually something that this world really needs and I think it's something that needs to be encouraged. But that always gets the ball rolling. Um, I cannot tell you how many times um, I will on the they'll message me back and say, "Oh my gosh, you didn't have to thank me. Um, you know, it's been awesome watching your journey, and I'm glad to support you. I'm glad to be positive." Um, and you know, I may just say, "Like, um, well, I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. How are you doing?" And then they'll message me back. And then before you know it, we're making all these connections. We're having these conversations. And then if we live locally, we're meeting up at Starbucks for coffee. So you just naturally get the ball rolling just by simply taking the time out to thank somebody for supporting you. Um, and that's like one of the biggest tips I can share with you guys. Sometimes it takes a while to build relationships. So don't get frustrated if you feel like, oh my gosh, like I, I want to help three to five people and it just seems like it's not happening. It just seems like there's not three to five people to help. There will be, but you need to give that time and you need to build those relationships in order for those three to five people um, to be there for you to help. Um, let's see what else. Oh, another huge thing too. Um, is talking about um, what you have to offer. I know I touched base on this before, but um, you know, why should somebody come to you? Why shouldn't they just get a gym membership and just use my fitness pal on their phone and um, do everything on their own? What value do you bring to them? And that, and you have to remember that you have people are are buying, it's not just they're buying the product, they're buying you, they're buying what you have to offer for them. So you need to talk about the kind of support that they're gonna get, the tips, the recipes, um, what the challenge groups are about, because that's really the missing piece to a lot of the reasons why people are failing all around us. They don't have that daily accountability. They don't have that daily support. You know, when you join the gym with a friend, and your friend stops going to the gym, what happens? You normally stop going to the gym too. But when you're in a challenge group and you know you gotta check in, 
and you're like, oh, I don't want to work out. Oh, I don't, I don't want to do this. But you work out and you make healthy choices because you know you have to post about that in the group. That's not something that a gym or anything else provides for you. So you have to talk about the value that we offer um, and what makes us so different and why, and why this has worked for you and share that with people. Um, let's see. Oh, here's another, um, another big thing too. When you are talking to somebody and they tell you they are going to purchase a challenge pack and they are going to join your challenge group, the best way to end that conversation is to tell them, let me know when you place your order and when you place your order, send me your order number so I can track it for you. And then once I have that order number, I can add you to the challenge group. Because um, what happens a lot of times is someone will tell you that they're going to join and purchase a challenge pack and they may, they may have messed it up and maybe ordered through um, the how website you know? instead of your website. Um, or maybe they forgot about it. Or maybe they kind of fell off the wagon and they got a little scared and they decided to not follow through. So if you're asking for um, the order number, it's like you're kind of leaving it open ended. They have to get back to you again, and and you want you want that. Um, so it's really important that you do ask that and tell them that okay. you can't add them to the group until um, that confirmation. Um, let's see. <laughs> I don't think we should have heard that part of the conversation. <laughs> Somebody's on, uh, not muted. Maybe Vanessa? Okay. Um, so hopefully I didn't just overwhelm you with a uh, ton of information and leave your head spinning. Is there any questions that you guys um, have for me? You guys can unmute yourself or you can um, type it in the chat bar. Welcome to Nation. Nobody has any questions? We're all good? Okay. Oh, how do you find folks or invite people on Instagram? Okay, um, so I'm probably not the best person to ask this. I just started um, building my Instagram account not that long ago. Um, but I will say a lot of people have been telling me that they've been Googling um, on YouTube um, how to um, find and invite people on Instagram. Um, I know it has a lot to do with the hashtags, um, and, ser and searching for people, but um, I am like just building my account for that. Like, I guess what I've been focusing on um, on Instagram is like, I look for people like um, you could search, say, mom of one or mom of boys, and you could search that hashtag, and then it would come up with a bunch of mom moms with boys so that's something that you guys have in common and then you could friend request them you could comment on their posts um and you could add them um well or they would like if you follow them and they would follow you then you can start building um people through instagram that way so it's really like you kind of have you have to kind of search for them on instagram but really like my best advice is to google um videos on youtube for that um, I wish I had better advice than that. Um, and um, Alyssa Shoemaker um, has a good video on that. It actually might be, it might be uploaded in the Dream Team, but if not, that would be a good um, video to look on YouTube is um, Alyssa Shoemaker and Instagram. Um, Leah, what do you think of sharing some of the videos in your Facebook posts? Sharing um, what videos, like the, the workout videos or making your own video? Shakeology videos? I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, yeah, I can. 
Shakeology videos, like, um, like well, the, in the beginning, we were talking about like how there's all those videos yes. that show all the value and the doctors being interviewed. Yeah. And then you said, okay, well don't market and use the marketing, you're marketing yourself. So I was just kind of curious what, cause I love those videos or, I mean, that's what convinced me to, to try it. So what do you think about opening, openly sharing those in your Facebook? Um, I can tell you that when I did do that in the past, I didn't get any likes or comments with them. Um, I have like shared information and posted about it and then posted the link of that video. Like if, if you want inf more information, click on this link below in the comment area and then people are more apt to click on that and listen to it. Or um, if they like or comment, I'll message them and say, hey, if you want any, any more information, I have great informative videos that I could send you. If you want me to, I could send you a link and you could check out more information on Shakeology. Um, once you start running your own challenge groups, you can start to share more about Shakeology um, and sharing those videos, like, you know, one or two videos on Shakeology a week in the group. And also another great way to share Shakeology is when you run a free group, like a free clean eating group. Um, it's a great way to also share about Shakeology and you can always share a video in one of those groups as well. So I love those videos too and I wish everybody would take the time to watch them, but when you post them on your personal page, um, they don't really get that much um, interaction unfortunately. Um, I know somebody said there was more questions. Are you sending private message invites daily? I find the hardest by far. Um, so private message, like private, what do you mean by that, Jamie? How are, you, how are you doing that on a daily basis? Like, how are you sending private messages, invites? Can you unmute yourself? I was sending private invites daily till I ran out of folks on my list. Okay. Um, I think, so a lot of people, like Jamie, are you like sending out invites without building that relationship and like just inviting everybody you know to a challenge group? Is that what you're doing? Private message. Okay, so a lot of times in the beginning, we think inviting is, has to be just sending a message inviting to a challenge group. Inviting can actually be any form of building a relationship or building a connection, that's inviting. Like, um, so it doesn't have to be um, a direct invite, like, would you like to join my challenge group? Um, working on, like, like I said before, like um, somebody that you just friended and saying, hey, you have three kids, I have three kids, we have these things in common, like trying to make that, that connection. Um, and then once you build that relationship and that connection, then inviting them. Um, if you've run out of everybody on your friends list, um, you want to invite, um, start friending more people. And another thing that I do a lot is I act, like if somebody tells me that they're not interested or they already do something that works for them or um, I'm sharing with friends and family what I'm doing, I always ask for referrals. I always ask, do you know anybody that would benefit from this? Um, even if it's through messaging, like, um, and I'm like, I, I always ask for referrals. I ask for referrals in my, in my challenge group too, because those are actually like the best people to get referrals from. They're in the challenge group. They know how it works. They know how it runs. They're getting results. And so it's easy for them to share with other people and recommend you as their coach. And granted, I know that you're not in that situation right yet because you're just inviting to your challenge group, but that's another way to get um, more inviting happening down the road. 
Um, just want to make sure I'm not missing anyone's. Oh, thanks, Sarah. Alyssa Shoemaker's video is called Creating a Pipeline. Stressing over Success Club 2. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you guys something about Success Club. So I stressed about hitting Success Club 2, like Success Club I, I remember feeling like it was never going to happen. I didn't know if it was ever possible. Um, was anybody going to let me help them? And instead of looking at Success Club as points, I looked at it as people. So instead of saying like, oh, I'm going to hit Success Club 5, like I thought of it as only, not those numbers, not those points, only as helping people. Like I'm on a mission to help change three to five people's lives. Like, don't even think about those success club points. I know you want to earn them, and I know you want to hit success club, and it's important. But focus more on the people that you're going to help. And if you focus more on that, those points are going to happen. Those points are going to come. So you don't want to get wrapped up in, in that part. Yes, you want to hit it, and yes, it's important. But if you're focusing on why you're doing what you're doing and keeping your intentions true, the points will just happen. So I hope that kind of helps a little bit. But I know it is stressful because I did stress too. Has anybody hit Success Club yet? No? Not yet? Anybody have any Success Club points? Sarah, you do, yay! You do too? Leah does? Two, Tara does, Sadie does, Lindsay's at four, Carly's at two. See, that's awesome. And we're, we're just in the beginning of the month. So, and you guys still have time. So really like this, this week, besides your, your personal development and your coach training and everything like that, um, start really thinking about your Facebook audience and, and think about, you know, what people want to see Think about how you're putting yourself out there. Stephanie has three. Awesome. Um, and, and think about forming um, those relationships, building those relationships, because that's really what's going to help your business. And, and it, you're building that pipeline. So as you're building these relationships and making these connections with, with people, it's going to help you. It may not pay off right away, but it, it eventually is going to help you. Um, and one other thing too, I want to tell you guys, um, that has really helped me a lot in my business is, and I know it's really easy for us to hide behind our computers, but pick up the phone and talk to somebody on the phone. And you can also do a zoom call, like what we're doing right now. You can actually sign up for a zoom, um, account for free. I think they give you 30 minutes or maybe 45 minutes for free. Um, and you can, you can do as many as you want, but I will say to somebody, do you have 30 minutes to chat or do you have 15 minutes to chat? Let me send you a link and we can Zoom chat and we can talk to each other like we, we are right now on this call. Um, or if they live locally, meet them in person. If you can get on the phone with them, do a Zoom chat or meet them in person. They can see your facial expressions. They can hear everything, the sound in your voice. They know you're being sincere. They know that you're sharing with them. You're not selling. Um, they'll know that you're passionate about what you're doing. If they can hear that and see that, you're going to hit Success Club. It's when you're messaging and you're kind of hiding behind the computer and you're not, um, people want that human interaction. And I, and I know that it's not easy picking up that phone and I know it's not easy doing a Zoom or, or meeting someone in person and you can be super nervous the first time that you do it, but it gets easier every time you do it. And picking up the phone is not something that we do a lot these days. Um, when you start getting Success Club, 
one thing that's really helped me in my business um, and, and when I get new customers is I have like a huge stack of thank you notes and blank note cards and I write every single person um, a little thank you. Um, thank you for having faith in me. Thank you for letting me be your coach. Thank you for joining my challenge group. And I can't tell you, people are not used to getting mail anymore these days. So I know it's like such a simple gesture, but it really goes a long way. Um, so I think the more, um, that more human connection that you can make with people and having that FaceTime with them will really help you in growing your business. Um, I should probably let you guys go because it's almost nine o'clock, but did anybody else have um, any other questions? We're good. I tapped your ears off. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for listening to me. I hope you guys have a good night and I hope that you guys thought this was helpful. You're welcome. You're welcome. I wish you guys the best of luck. You're so welcome. You guys are so nice. <laughs> Hi, Pat. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a good night. Thank you so much for your time.